Hi everyone, this is Pan Leong. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about radioactive decay. Let's get into it. Uh, one of the most important things regarding uh, to learn radioactive decay is actually to find out the age of some fossils or the age of the rocks on Earth or uh, even bigger is to find out the age of the Earth itself. So like for example, this is Sue, the largest and most complete T-Rex ever found and it is currently in display at the Field Museum in Chicago. So, philanthologist actually uses the disintegration of radioactive nuclei to date the fossils remain to, of the extinct species. So what is radioactivity or radioactive decay? Right, by definition, it is actually the process in which an unstable nucleus to becomes a more stable nucleus by emitting out alpha, beta particles and also gamma ray. So radioactive decay is a spontaneous and random process. But what does spontaneous and random actually mean? Okay, so we're going to find out what does spontaneous and random actually means by through this particular simulation. Now, so in this particular simulation, I'm going to stop this first. Okay, so in this particular simulation, I have 100 uranium atoms. So I'm going to make it lesser so it's easier for us to see. So there's 16 uranium atoms right now on the screen. Alright, so uh, as you can see in this particular uh, simulation, there are uranium atoms over there. So in order for us to find out uh, what is spontaneous and random means is that you can identify uh, try to identify or predict which uranium atom will actually disappear first or in another words to say which uranium atom will disintegrate first will decay first okay so i'm gonna start the simulation and you can see that the decay actually happens i can't really predict will this one decay next oh it's not it's the top one or let's go to another one another one actually disintegrated so i can't really predict which one will disintegrate first so i'm gonna reset this and just now this was the first uranium atom to uh decay so will it be this one again to decay if i restart the whole entire simulation and it's not you if you notice the bottom corner uh, uranium actually disintegrated first so this is actually what it meant by being spontaneous and also being random okay so let's go to the next slide okay so random actually means the time of decay of each atom cannot be predicted which uranium atom will decay first we have no idea will it take two minutes or two seconds for the radioactive elements to actually decay unknown so it's unpredictable therefore it is random now spontaneous actually means that it happens by itself without an external stimuli external stimuli is actually physical or chemical processes physical is in terms of heat mass density or pressure right so radioactive decay doesn't happen because it has heat or there's pressure or certain temperature it will decay or by chemical reaction Alright, so that is what spontaneous means. It, th it just happened without any external stimulus. So there are three types of naturally occurring uh, radiation. We have alpha radiation or alpha particle. So alpha particle is also helium particle. It has two protons, it has two neutrons in the nucleus and is positively charged. The next radiation is actually beta decay. So it is actually a fast moving electron and it is actually because the nucleus is very unstable due to too many neutrons. All right, so because too many neutrons, the neutrons actually split to become one proton and one electron and that electron get kicked out from the nucleus. Okay, so the beta decay is a negatively charged particle. Now the last radiation is gamma decay or gamma radiation. And gamma we've learned before in the electromagnetic uh, spectrum in wave and it's a high frequency electromagnetic wave. So it is massless because it's a wave, it's an energy, right? And it is neutrally charged. There's no charge for gamma decay. So for alpha decay, right, or the symbol of alpha, 
Alright, it's a nucleus emitting out an alpha particle. Alright, we write it as helium-4-2 or alpha-4-2, whereby the nucleus will lose two protons and two neutrons. So the parent nucleus, alright, in the nucleus, recalling back, uh, nucleus is closely packed of neutrons and also protons. So from the nucleus, it emits out uh, the alpha particle of uh, two protons and two neutrons and the daughter nucleus will lose two proton and two neutrons so the general equation for alpha decay or alpha radiation all right is x a z whereby this is the parent nucleus the daughter nucleus will have a minus four in the atomic mass number and the proton number will have a minus two proton plus a uh, alpha particle is being emitted out so example is here uranium 23892 all right it will actually decay to become thorium 23490 and also emitting out an alpha particle of helium 42 so this is general equation for alpha decay next is beta decay now when the nucleus has too many neutrons all right neutron uh, nucleus has proton and neutrons so when there's too many neutrons it's become unstable so the neutron will actually split into a proton and a electron as seen uh, as seen over here so as a result the proton will remain in the nucleus to achieve nuclear stability but electrons being negatively charged it will actually be emitted out as a high kinetic energy beta particle so the general equation for beta particle is as you can see here x as the element a z and after the decay it will become the daughter nucleus of a z plus one why plus one because electron is being emitted out electron has a negative one charge so the proton number needs to be added by one so the example here is um o198 and it becomes decay into f199 plus an electron particle of zero negative one so this is actually for beta decay let's go to gamma decay now gamma decay generally occur because uh, it actually happens after the nucleus undergo alpha and beta decay so nucleus are usually left with excess energy internally in the nucleus so um, in order to achieve stability, all right, the nucleus actually have to release out energy and this energy release out our gamma rays. So after releasing out gamma rays, the nucleus will become more stable. So as you can see here, the daughter nucleus become less energetic. Excited nucleus because there's too much of energy in the nucleus. So it just emits out a gamma radiation, a gamma ray, and the nucleus will become more stable. So is there any changes in the elements uh, of the proton and neutron? There isn't. All right. So gamma radiation uh, general equation is X A Z, and the daughter nuclei becomes Y A Z plus gamma radiation. The atomic mass is the same. The proton number is also the same, as you can see over here. All right. For example, over here. Okay, there is PO2184, uh, it decays become plumbum 20682, but it decays, it releases out an alpha particle first, an alpha 42, helium 42, and it actually emits out a gamma ray. So there's two decay happening in this particular equation, alpha decay and then gamma decay. Or cobalt 6027, uh, it decays by releasing out a ga gamma decay and it's still cobalt 60 and 27. So this means that the nucleus was originally unstable because too many internal energy. So it emits out a gamma radiation to become even more stable. So I hope from this particular explanation, you understand what is alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma decay. The next video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to actually solve problems with radioactive decay. So that's all for this particular video. Bye everyone.